Welcome to the Boujou Nana Boujou podcast. You're on the air. Hello, Nana Boujou. It's me, Kermit the Frog. Well, hey, Kermit. What's going on? Sweetie, it's Kermit. Well, hi, Kirby. Uh, hello, hello, Natasha. How are you? Doing pretty good. What can I do for you, Kermit? Well, I wanted to call in and two things. Uh, first, just wanted to learn the Ojibwe word of the day. Well, the Ojibwe word of the day, what is today? Uh, today is uh, Wednesday, Abituse. Abituse, Wednesday. Yep. And um, I was also wondering if I could get some advice. Yeah, sure, I give you advice. What's going on? Even though I think he's my elder. <laughs> yeah, I think he is. Um, I'm having some, some relationship problems. Oh, you came to the right place. I know everything there is to know about women. <laughs> Do you? Yep. I learned it all from watching you, all right? <laughs> what can I help you with? Well, you know, it's Miss Piggy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know how I feel about her. Well, I, I know you don't like her. But, yeah, you, you have to understand she, she has a drinking problem. Yeah. She's a drunk. And she's abusive. And she's probably a tran. Trans. Whatever. No, she's, she's just a pig. But, you know, here's my problem. Sometimes, you know, when uh, when she's not drunk, um, she'll, she'll, you know, she wants to get frisky. Yeah. And um, what do you do when, when the person you love makes your skin crawl? <laughs> makes your skin crawl? Well, it, it just crawls when, when, when she touches me. But then, you know... When, when, when I cringe and, and try to get away, she, she gets mad and she starts to hit. Well, <laughs> that's because, okay, this is what's going on in your life. Watch this, sweetie. I'm going to fix his life. <laughs> okay. Uh, you're not attracted to her. No, no. She's, you know, she's a good person. And, and we, we've been together for a long time. Yeah, you're justifying why you're together. But the reality is... If you can't handle her touching you, that means she grosses you out. And uh, something happened. I guess this happened to uh, Johnny Depp, too. Really? Yeah. It was part of that trial we didn't watch. But he couldn't, uh, you know, get busy with Amber Heard anymore because uh, all the abuse. And they, they were like, yeah, that's common when there's an abusive relationship. You know, the love dies. <laughs> yeah. So that's what's going on. You know, she's smacked you around too much. She's done damage to your, you know, like your heart. You're not attracted to her anymore. Now you're just with her out of habit. You're afraid to leave because, you know, I don't know, you're addicted to her or something. Oh, but I love her. No, you don't. No, I do. I've been with her for like 25 years or something by now. If you really loved her, you would have married her by now. You would have had kids with her, and those children would have been... What's that word in the Bible? Abominations. Abominations. Little gross half pig, half frog things. Ugh. Yeah, you need to get out of that relationship before it's too late, Kermit. Well, I guess I'll think about it. Yeah, think about it. We need a place to stay. You give us a call. You can stay on the couch in the kitchen. In the kitchen? I mean the living room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anything else I can do for you? Um, how do you say goodbye in Ojibwe? Well, you know, we don't really say goodbye. We say, Gigawabamin, minawa. That means, I will see you again. Gigawabamin, minawa, not a bushu. Gigawabamin, minawa, Kermi. Yeah, you too. You too, Natasha. <laughs> okay. Yeah, see you, buddy. Hang in there. Yeah, it's just like Johnny Depp all over. You can only take so much abuse from a woman before you just can't even find her attractive anymore. Have you ever liked somebody and then stopped being attracted to them? Yeah, all the time. <laughs> Until I met you, every woman... I was really attracted to for about a week. And I'd be like, ah, uh, you know what? She ain't all that.
God. She's a lot fatter in real life. <laughs> no. Yeah. I remember being a young man and being kind of stuck in a relationship because uh, he just, you know, it's more trouble getting out of a relationship than just putting up with her nonsense. There's no way to live. Fat, drunk, and stupid are no way to go through life. <laughs> but I tried my best. <laughs> I remember one day You and me in a pouring water ran down my chin so you pulled me close and you drank it in and I remember your ways and you and me in a sad embrace and I remember your place where you pulled me close and you kissed my face will I will I ever see no, I don't think I'll ever see you again. And I remember one night and the casual fight by can as a room grew dim You lied to me When you talked about him But I remember your ways You and me In a sad embrace And I remember a place Where you pulled me close And you kissed my face Will I Will I ever see you no, I, I don't think I'll ever see you again. Will I, la, la, did I ever see you again? No, I, I don't think I'll ever see you again. Sacrifice my sacred cow That was then, this is now If life's a stage, then take a bow If life's a stage, then take a bow I have to tell a story. Okay kids, here's a story. Time now for story time with Emily Aubrey and Michael Lyons. <clears throat> Back in the days of the grandfathers, there was a young Anishinaabe man. He might have been from, he might have, actually, he might have been Dakota. You know what, I think he actually turned out to be Puerto Rican. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, but whatever. Let's say he was from Sisseton, South Dakota, because I heard his, he actually had relatives in Sisseton. Okay. There was a young man who had a dream. He wanted to be a singer and a dancer. And he, he came from a very modest, very traditional reservation home on the Sisseton Reservation in South Dakota. What's that one called? Uh, the one in Sisseton is called Fort... No, I don't know. Is it just Sisseton? Is there a Sisseton Sioux? Hoom Papa Sioux? Hoom papa hoom papa hoom papa mau mau, the hoom papa soo. Anyway, so he's from a reservation. He had this. He wanted to be a dancer and a singer. But his grandfather wanted him to be a traditional powwow dancer, and carry on the family tradition of powwow dancing. He was a fancy dancer, in fact. No, he wasn't. He was a traditional dancer. He had leggings and. 
you know, traditional Dakota, you know, regalia, I guess you'd call it. And he went to his grandfather and he said, Grandfather, I have a dream. I want to go to the city and I want to follow my dream of becoming a singer and a dancer. And his grandfather looked at him and he said, and he said, grandson, I am very old and I'm very traditional and I have my own plans for you. You must stay here and carry on our ways. He goes, no, grandfather, I want to be my, be my own man. So the grandfather said this, he goes, I'm going to go on a sweat and I'm going to have a dream. When I come out, I will tell you my decision. So that night he went out of sweat and he, and he fell asleep. And when he woke up, he came and he called his grandson. He goes, grandson, I had a dream that you will head off to the city known as Los Angeles. No, it was San Francisco. Yeah, San Francisco. You will go to the city of San Francisco in the 70s. And I will give you this traditional Dakota garb, Dakota regalia. And I will paint your face war paint. And he, and he dressed him up and he drove him down to the bus stop. And he goes, now go, go to this land of San Francisco. So this guy gets on the bus and he's all dressed up in his regalia. He's got buckskin, leggings, war paint, you know, the whole nine yards. Hours go by, eventually he ends up in San Francisco, gets off the bus. Who's there? There's a guy in all leather too. Only this guy's in black shiny leather. He's got a cap and a motorcycle. And he goes, hey, where are you from? And the Indian guy goes, oh, I'm from the reservation. I came out here to San Francisco. I want to be a singer and a dancer. And, he, and the biker goes, oh, hey, that's cool. So do I. I'm going to go for a ride in the back of my motorcycle. And well, this Indian guy, you know, he's, he's, he's straight off the res. He, he doesn't know any better. He goes, yeah, sure. I can't see <laughs> dangerous red flags. You know, so he gets on the bike and they start riding through town. And they see a construction site. And they stop there and there's a guy in a jackhammer. <laughs> They're like, hey, I'm back. We're trying to drive around this construction site. Can you, can you help us? And the construction guy stops and goes, hey, Indian biker guy. What are you guys doing? Because we're, we're going to, we want to be singers and dancers. And the construction guy looks around and goes, now, don't tell my buddies on the union, but I want to be a singer and a dancer too. But I'm just a construction worker, you know. I mean, yeah, I got this wife beater and my hard hat, and I look pretty buff, but I'm not happy. I want to be a singer. I want to be a dancer. And I'm like, well, hey, why don't you come with us? So he gets on the back, and all the three of them are riding down his on his motorcycle, just snug, you know. Indian guys like them in in the middle of a I don't know what. Well, pretty soon a cop comes by. Woo 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 woo! And he pulls him over. He goes, "Hey guys, excuse me, biker, Indian construction guy. Three of you guys can't be riding around a motorcycle. Only one of you has a helmet, and that's a construction guy. Drive, you know, whatever. I'm gonna write you a ticket." I said, "Oh please, officer, don't give us a ticket." We want to be singers and dancers. We don't have any place to live. Can we come to back to your house and live with you and your wife? And the bike and the policeman goes, I don't have a wife. Never mind why. And quite frankly, I know what you're saying. I may look like a cop, and I am a cop, but I want to be a singer and a dancer too. But You can't live with me. You want to go stay someplace? Go stay at the YMCA, the Young Men's Center, or whatever. The YMCA. And the Indian guy goes, YMCA? I don't want to go down there. That doesn't sound very fun. And the cop goes, no, it's fun to stay at the YMCA. 
And they all looked at each other, and the construction worker goes, what did you just say? And the cop goes, I said it's fun to stay at the YMCA. And, it, and in time, each of them started snapping their fingers. It's fun to stay at the YMCA. It's fun to stay at the... And this is the story of how the Indian guy from the village people became the Indian guy from the village people. Years would come and they'd become the most popular closet homosexual group to ever be on the same record label as Kiss, by the way. That's right. Yeah, I think they had the same management. Kiss and um, the village people. Donna Summer. Donna Summer, who's that? You don't remember Donna Summer? She a disco singer? <laughs> yeah. What was her song? Um, dancing queen. I want to be your partner, can't you? No, that's the yeah, album. <laughs> All right. What did uh, Donna Summer sing? I remember she had a great... It had something to do with the summer. Was there a, did Donna Summer sing a song about summer? 